In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lobster sleeps tonight. Hello everybody, Danky here, and today we are going to be looking and laughing at uh, the ridiculousness that is the dark professor Jordan Peterson. I have him here, a lobster cam for you. Uh, this is his live reaction, of course, to what we are about to see. Uh, the video we're watching today is called Why Frozen Fails as Art. So, Otherwise it gets one-sided, like Frozen, which was an absolutely dismal and wretched movie. <laughs> it was myth Already we're off to a good start. Oh, it's Frozen, it's a wretched, dismal movie. I'm a... 50-year-old man talking about a Disney movie made for 12-year-old children. Oh. It was. Disney's pretty good at mythology, but Fro Frozen was pure ideology. The fucking dork. So it was very annoying to see that, because in most situations, the Disney movies pure are pretty good at ideology. balancing out the archetypes. So, and that's part of the reason they're, they're so insanely popular. You know, they present an archetypal picture of the world. Okay. And the thing is, you say, well, you know, I don't have any religious beliefs. You might say that to yourself. It's like, <laughs> fine, why do you watch Disney movies? <laughs> what the hell do you think? <laughs> what the fuck? Yo. <laughs> okay. You're not religious. Well, then why the fuck do you watch Disney movies then, you dumbass? I mean... Oh my god. What do you think you're doing in the theater? You don't think that's a religious experience? It's just because you're completely <laughs> clueless about what religious experiences are. What? You're watching a bunch of pictures. Jordan Peterson is drawings. mesmerized by you the know, processes of things of that animation. aren't even real. And He's then just, just mesmerized by them. Embedded in there, it's gotcha. Jordan Peterson was pr he probably watched a lot of Disney movies growing up, and he just got so infatuated with them that he has just turned this into his whole. His whole philosophy is just like a analyzing the d uh, Jungian archetypes of the Disney movies. Your imagination. So you say, well, I don't believe in any of that. It's like, yeah, right. So come Check on. Checkmate, atheists. You believe in it. Disney movies exist. Checkmate, atheists. What's he drinking there? A Diet Coke? What a weirdo. What a freaking weirdo. Basically, yes. But it's, it's, it's a, there's a problem underneath that that's even a bit deeper. Because, like, I think the dominance hierarchy is real. <laughs> Period. The, real. You know, upon my 300th uh, viewing of Pinocchio, it has led me to conclude that the dominance hierarchy is indeed real. So, women, you need to get back in the kitchen. And, uh, men, you need to clean your room, clean your penis, and, uh, go join the military. But it's not ex- it's... It's a weird structure, because it's- it's- it's like, you know, it's like the- the example I gave earlier, where there's the tunnel, what and the, the train going through it, and the train keeps- At any moment, the train cars are full of different things. What well, the Dominance fuck are you talking kind of like about? That. It's actually a dissipative structure. It's actually That's a dissipative the, so structure. A dissipative like, what structure the fuck? Is like a, you're talking about Frozen, and then you start talking about the dominance hierarchy, and then you start talking about trains and tunnels and a dissipative structure. Like, this is Jordan Peterson in a nutshell right here. It's just con constant uh, fuckery, constant mind fuckery going on. Uh, and he says a lot of gobbledygook, and if, if you're – maybe if you're stoned out of your mind, you might think you've pieced some of it together and you understand, like, the meaning behind it. But unless you're some kind of Jungian genius, you're not going to derive any kind of meaning from any of this bullshit, aside from just the reactionary uh, crap that Jordan Peterson wants you to take from his, his, his uh, musings, his musings about uh, animated movies for kids. Okay, uh, you know when you let the water go out of a drain and you get that coil, that funnel? Well, yeah. is that a thing? That that is well, definitely a thing. Well, it's a constant a across a series of transformations. It's a dissipative structure, and the physicist Schrödinger regarded now people as dissipative physics. structures. So, because we're I mean, he really should just write a whole textbook about Frozen. Like, here's the physics, here's the metaphysics, here's the Jungian archetypes, here's the dominance hierarchy. This is all 
It all ties. It all ties back into Disney's animated film Frozen. Our our, our structure isn't constant. Like I don't know. You probably replaced every cell in your body, roughly speaking, or at least the constituent elements of every I cell. I mean, you know. Two or three times since he sounds alive. like somebody who's just are. smoked so a like shit this. ton of weed, like some really dank Kush, and he just starts rambling. You guys ever been at a party where somebody just starts rambling, and you can tell they're just high as fuck? It's like that scene in The Sopranos where Christopher is like rambling at the funeral. You know, you just want you you're just like, okay, dude, whatever, cool. This thing that's a permanent structure in a flux. Look at his hands. And the dominant hierarchy is sort of like that. Because the constituent elements of it keep changing, but its existence is, its existence is there, and so I don't exactly know what to make of a category like that, except that I'm certainly going to say that it's real. Well, his whole thing is like he wants to resist the change to the dominance hierarchy, but here he is admitting that like it does change. So, you know, which is it, Jordan Peterson? You're you're such a weirdo. Or I, if you don't like that, I can say I don't care if it's real because all of you act as if there's nothing that's more real than that. The so that'll do for me because, you know, that brings up another question. How do you know what someone regards as real? And one answer is, well, you listen to what they say. Holy shit. It's like, uh, no. How can anybody listen to this guy? I mean, this is just... That's a much more accurate guide to... This is just who gobbledygook. They are. Because what do they know about who they are? They've got a vague model of who they are, and it's usually hyper-tilted towards banality and conformity. Banality. Self-protection. You're all so banal. I am the enlightened gentleman. I am the Socrates of the of modern age. The metaphor used by Jesus is the wind. Can't see the He's wind. drinking a Coke Zero. Hmm. Well, that that's like a hurricane is a dissipative structure, so that you know that's a reason. All right, analogy. I thought this was going to be about is frozen. Often to the wind. He's just talking so, about hurricanes and trains and any other questions? Physics and Schrodinger yes. and yeah. Oh, it's an appalling ideology because the people who created it had the idea about what it should be before they made it, so it's propaganda. Hmm? You can say exactly what Frozen is about. Oh, here we go. So it's propaganda. It's a Frozen's propaganda. A, a truly mythologically based story, you can never fully say what it's about. You can just talk about it forever and ever and ever and ever. So it's it's a wellspring of meaning. So, I mean, this really uh, this really kind of goes back to my theory of Jordan Peterson just being completely infatuated with like Disney movies when he was a kid, and he's just never lost to that. He's grown up and he's just totally obsessed with like snow white and the seven dwarves he's totally obsessed with like the little mermaid he's like oh oh the little mermaid uh i i really w want to analyze the jungian archetypes of disney's aladdin uh what did the golden lamp uh really symbolize but mankind's uh struggle for enlightenment against the postmodern onslaught Oh, sure they are. Of course that's what they're doing. Oh, yeah, it's calculated marketing. It's calculated, yeah. dude. Frozen yeah, sure. is postmodern propaganda. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they didn't need men, and, you know, God. They don't break. need men. You know. Because, God forbid, we make one Disney movie where the princess isn't a damsel in distress saved by a guy. Like, that's literally, like, why he's all pissy about this right now is because, oh, you know, they didn't show Prince Charming save the damsel in distress, and that's a Jungian archetype that's gone down and passed through the hero's tale and traditions uh, since time immemorial. It's like, maybe they wanted to do something different? I don't know. Maybe they wanted to, like, not have the princess get saved by the prince? You know, Jesus. I mean, his, his favorite Disney movie is probably Beauty and the Beast, where uh, Belle... Uh, goes to her obviously like abusive husband she makes excuses for him and uh apologizes for him and stuff like that that's probably his favorite disney movie you know Belle, she understood her place on the dominance hierarchy she was able to you know uh understand that she was a rung below the beast and she respected his masculinity and in return he rewarded her with his love just because you need men doesn't mean you have to like them <laughs> Yeah, so, so 
I mean, I've thought a lot about the difference between propaganda and art. So, art's actually a process rather than an end product. Jordan Peterson, his and videos luck, are art. If you have a piece of art, the process is embedded There's nothing in what the byproduct. Remotely propagandistic and so it reflects about the process his, when you bring uh, it into views. your house. And so it's an active, it's a, it's a crystallized act of exploration. And the real artist doesn't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. They're exploring. I can, I can rec... Real artists don't know what they're doing? Okay, so... He's talking about animated movies. If you're an artist that doesn't know what they're doing and you're making an animated movie, you have to plan out the animation. You have to uh, draw out the, the animation se uh, cells, the frames. You have to do storyboarding. You have to record the voices. You have to do the script. All this shit... Uh, uh, intense planning goes into all of that. I don't know. Jordan Peterson just thinks that like Disney just said bippity boppity boo and out from the magic cauldron came all these Disney movies. I think, you know, I think uh, he's living in a little dream world. Uh, I don't think people have really explained to Jordan Peterson how animated movies are actually made because he seems to be. He seems to attribute it to a religious experience. He seems to say, oh, I think Jesus or or God or a, a supreme being, as Jung would say, would would uh, uh, drive the animation frames of the movie ever forward. <sighs> All right, this that's about enough Jordan Peterson that I can stomach. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I found that... Uh, one part hilarious, one part really, really sad. So, hope you guys liked it. Thank you very much.